Reports now from House Ways and Means and the House Budget Committee sees Congressman Lloyd Smucker, also the former acting chair of the White House Council of Economic Advisors. Uh, he is Thomas Phillips, uh, Phillipson. Uh, Congressman, i got to get first to you. The White House is denying reports that it was going to restart leasing for oil and gas, right? So there's urgency here. Get, people are feeling it at the pump. You know, the idea is, is that, you know, this will not affect supply uh, nation, uh, excuse me, globally. What is your take on that? Well, this 40-year high of inflation, this uh, pain that my constituents are feeling every time they fill their tank uh, at the pump is real. It's affecting Americans everywhere, people all across my district. I think of Connie in my district, who's a 70-year-old who is considering taking a part-time job to make ends meet. Uh, Tim in my district literally said he's choosing between buying gas or buying food for his table. Uh, and then a couple in my district who are putting off retirement as a result of this. Inflation affects uh, lower income. Yeah. There's a there's the a Penn Wharton study that the highest impact of inflation are those at the lower end of the economic scale. Uh, uh, the scale. This this pain is real. Uh, they are feeling it. They're seeing it every time they go to the yeah, grocery Senator, store. Yeah, and Senator Joni Ernst said, with for small businesses, uh, to the congressman's point, it feels like a value-added tax is added every step of the way, uh, Thomas, in the supply chain. You know, here's the thing: we just showed the the swing between high tax and high regulation states versus low tax and low regulation states. Thomas, it's like a two dollar swing. There's urgency here. People are feeling it. Why doesn't the government step up and get it and that this is what people are feeling at the pump? Yeah, I think, I mean, the, the administration, I think, is running out of scapegoats for this. Uh, it used to be that it was COVID, and, and then it was private companies price gouging, and then it was Putin. All three are essentially policy-induced uh, inflation. You know, you can't explain it with the bottlenecks for COVID because 75% of prices are going up. Same with companies. There, you companies in competitive industries can't raise prices, and 75% of prices are going up. It's yeah. not like they're all colluding. And the la latest version is Putin. That's a that's a foreign policy failure as opposed to a monetary and fiscal policy failure. Yeah. That's to the uh, recent hikes. And, you know, the other thing, too, is, Congressman, we've got former Obama and Clinton officials, including Larry Summers, saying the White House is misleading America, claiming there's price gouging by oil and gas companies. By the way, let's listen to what the White House and the media and the Democrats have been saying about gas prices. Watch this. The oil and gas industry right now is receiving profit, uh, windfall profits. We've seen that. They publicly report their profits. They publicly report this information. And instead of keeping up with current demand, too many of these companies, in our view, are making the calculated decision. Can we have an honest conversation about gas prices? Because too much of the U.S. media chatter is distorted to the point of being dishonest. Higher gas prices is a small sacrifice to make. Many politicians act as though it's President Biden who caused inflation and that he can fix this. No, I mean, you know, he did not cause the war which caused prices to surge. And you heard the president of the United States come out say Putin's price hike. Putin's price hike. A Putin price hike. Putin's price hike. And Putin's price hike is a great way to message it. Okay, Congressman, all right, you know, enough already. Listen, gasoline climbed nearly 50% before Putin invaded. Now it's up almost double since the president sat down in the Oval Office. So, you know, Jen Psaki well, is saying oil and gas companies are reporting disinformation. What proof is there of that, disinformation? Well, they're, they're looking around to find anyone they can blame. I mean, who, who can blame them for doing that? At first, they didn't want to talk about inflation at all. Now they know it's a real issue that they're being held accountable for. The amazing thing about this is this wasn't by accident. You already mentioned Larry Summers. When they passed the American Rescue Plan, he said he believed it was the worst, uh, the worst policy that had been put forward in 40 years and would result in exactly what we're seeing today. So they can't say they haven't been warned. And in fact, I'll go a step further. This is what they wanted. 
Biden said he wanted to stop drilling. They have not approved one additional permit on federal land. That was by design. They wanted the price of gas to go up. Multiple uh, individuals in the administration said that was the policy plan. So this isn't by accident. This isn't because they have yeah, been warned. Yeah, let's stay on that. What they want. And, you know, by the way, the White House is now talking about changing the rules around retirement accounts to have the money be invested to, to advance political or social agendas like climate change. I, we thought retirement income was just about re raising retirement income, not politicizing it, Thomas. Here's the thing. To the congressman's point, these are the individuals who said stop fossil fuels. The president said it. Gina McCarthy, I want fossil fuels gone. She's the national climate advisor. John Kerry said it. The leaders in the Interior Department said it. More and more. Energy Secretary Granholm said we got to keep fossil fuels in the ground. That's what's going on, Thomas. Your final word. Yeah, I mean, the solution for these guys is, you see they're invoking the defense production. I have to get more green, green energy now. Their solution to high energy prices is more, even higher energy prices. Because the reason we, we don't have green energy, the reason the market hasn't eliminated is because it's more costly. So they want to basically say, we have high energy costs. Let's make it more expensive by forcing more green energy. All right. Well, they're going to pay for it at the polls. Thomas Phillipson, Congressman Smucker, thanks for joining us tonight. It's good to spend time with you both.